unfair disadvantage for those who were coming to visit. And immediately, I felt we needed to look at that. But my medical professionals say, Eric, we're at a different place. We have to wait until we're at a place where we're at a low area and we can re-examine some of the mandates. We're here today. Currently, only non-residents are exempt under this executive order. We expanded it to residents of New York City. It's unimaginable. We were treating our performers differently because they lived and played for home teams. It's not acceptable. There we have it. Stephen A., your reaction. Well, Nick's first New York always. And so for me, I'm very, very happy that Kyrie Irving is going to be on the basketball court. I'm ecstatic, mind you, because his absence would have cost the Brooklyn Nets a championship. I firmly believe that. And so the fact that he gets to play, I'm very, very happy. The mandate was bogus. Mayor Adams should have lifted this months ago. I don't care what he says. Uh, the Bill de Blasio administration is no longer in office. Mayor Adams is. And it should not have taken this long because the second that fans were allowed to come into the arena uh, un unvaccinated and even the player himself could come and sit in the stands unvaccinated, then Kyrie Irving should have been allowed to play, particularly when visitors could come to the Barclays Center, as Mayor Adams just articulated, and they could perform. It didn't need to take this long. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it was a dereliction of duty up to this point that that it wasn't that it wasn't changed. Having said that, I also don't want to give uh, the NBA a pass. The reality of the situation is the best interest of the game is a clause that could have been used to mandate that folks be vaccinated. It's not a right to play in the NBA. It's a privilege. It's your league. And you have the right to invoke and implement what rules you want to. I know the Players Association was giving you resistance, although they both were supportive of players being vaccinated, although they didn't want it to be an enforceable matter. But maybe that's something that's going to be revisited with their next collective bargaining negotiations because it should not have come to this point. With all of that being said, we all benefit. Basketball lovers everywhere. Because Kyrie Irving needs to be on the basketball court. Even though this had a lot to do because of baseball with the Aaron Judges of the world and the Rizzos of the world and the Yankees because their brand is much bigger than the Brooklyn Nets. The bottom line is as basketball fans, basketball lovers, we benefit from wit witnessing the greatness of Kyrie Irving. He is no hero. He is no heroine. Um, he put himself above the team, which is entirely his right. And it's understandable because we're talking about injecting something into your body, which we all understand. But at the end of the day, that don't make him no damn hero because he's not. He was willing to leave the Brooklyn Nets hand, hand, you know, hanging if necessary, willing to jeopardize their championship hopes if necessary because of his individual isolated choice at the expense of his entire organization. And if that's somebody's definition of a hero, I'll just say a damn sure ain't mine. And that's where I stand with it. And I ain't backing up one bit from that position. Right, Stephen. So obviously this rule was ill written from the start. The execution of it was very odd, very bizarre. And so getting rid of it makes common sense as well as great for the game of the basketball in the NBA. We agree. I'm no longer a New York City resident. If I was, I would be scratching my head a little bit about the mayor two days ago saying one thing and then two days later completely reversing course. It actually was less than that. Yep. But, you know, that's what politicians do. So that's fine. Uh, this, this Brooklyn Nets season has been one giant wrecking ball from where they thought they would be to where they are now. And to be honest with you, it's a miracle, no matter where you stand on this issue, it's a miracle that they have gotten to the point where they've still got some sort of shot in this game to get to the finals and to win. Considering what's happened with Kyrie, considering what's happened with the injuries that they've had, I mean, obviously Durant, but also Joe Harris and other guys on their roster. Considering James Harden, bailing on them mid-season, 
it, it, it's really a, a commentary on the resiliency and the length of an NBA season. So if I were the Brooklyn Nets, I would be, after everything that you've gone through and battered and scarred and everything, I would be thanking whatever higher power that you uh, look to that you still have a shot here and try to take every possible advantage of it because it's just proof you never know what's going to happen. Two people that deserve a whole lot of credit is Sean Marks, head of basketball operations for the Brooklyn Nets, as well as Coach Steve Nash. Just from the standpoint that these are two people that have had to deal with things that should have nothing to do with their job description whatsoever. You know, and for them to sit up there and to do the job that they've done to hold down the fort, along with, of course, the greatness of Kevin Durant, who went healthy, went in there night in and night out. I will remind everybody, the Brooklyn Nets were tied for the number one seed in the Eastern Conference when Kevin Durant was healthy and when he went down. Immediately upon going down and missing like 17 or 18 straight games, the Brooklyn Nets endured an 11-game losing streak, and they ended up being an eighth seed. That's mm -hmm. how potent and legit and superstar status he is. With all of that being said, again, you're going to have people in Brooklyn, and this is the sickening part because I'm a New